Take them wait everyone to stand for the Pledge of Flag, please. Cecil, 
And um, we have a, a donation. I'd like for them to come forward as I announce their names. But we um, have invited uh, Derek DeWitt, the executive director of the Boys and Girls Club, and John Ness from the West Cecil Health Center to receive their donations and to thank them on behalf of Cecil for all their good work here in the marketplace and the, and the community. Derek, thank you so much. There you go. John, thank you. Thank you.
I would say that uh, if it's Tuesday, it would be after school. It would probably be at a, a 3.30 event. 3.30, 3 o'clock, 3.30. 3 o'clock, 3.30. Exactly where is that? It would be at Meadow Park. Uh, I think they're going to be running the same that we did the, uh, the Lucky Charm race. So they'd be running across Delaware Avenue, back by the hatchery ponds, swinging up and around and coming back through. Pretty excited about that. Uh, at the last meeting, Mr. Giblin had given uh, uh, he had given a uh, certainly uh, a proclamation and appreciation to his favorite mayor, and I just wanted to bring. Maybe I might want to read that one more time uh, for everybody that wasn't here, but uh, I'll I'll pass on reading it again. But uh, Mr. Giblin uh, had some questions and some ideals for the council, and I just wanted to give him a a quick. Uh, rundown he, he listed about six items and uh, he talked a little bit about a mini park maybe putting some uh, uh, seating down by the bridge street bridge uh, uh, that's still under ad advisement uh, the annual barbecue bash i love the idea uh, we had uh, and i didn't i just wanted to let you know that over the last couple of years i've reached out to Kansas City Barbecue Company, and we were asking to see if we could host the Maryland State Championship here for the barbecue. Uh, Bel Air hosts that event that you were saying is actually the Maryland State Championship in Bel Air, where they have all the uh, barbecue folks. So uh, I would love to see that uh, happen, and uh, we might put that in the hands of uh, our Parks and Rec Department, pull that one off for us. The uh, quarter new newsletter you were talking about we're using social media uh, the best that we can now uh, we've been trying to get away and be a little bit more green you wouldn't be able to tell it with all the paperwork we have up here but it's a, a good idea maybe we can include not necessarily a quarterly newsletter but maybe we can do a uh, uh, bi-yearly uh, newsletter in with our uh, our uh, community guide maybe we can create that letter uh, that's in it uh, we do put the community guide out twice a year and maybe we can make some type of uh, formal formal a little more formal uh, uh, letter from the board uh, you mentioned about a flea market uh, um, uh, the folks at Brook Bend are hosting uh, a, a uh, I don't know if you want to necessarily call it a flea market, but the second Saturday of each month behind Brook Bend on Howard Street, uh, they are hosting uh, venues. And I'm not sure if you were aware of that or not, but it's the second Saturday of every month uh, on Howard Street, exactly where you were thinking about it. And uh, there has been vendors. Uh, they had a, 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 an ice cream vendor there. They had the uh, uh, a meat and cheese vendor. Uh, they have uh, uh, many flea market type items, but it's a very nice event. It's growing. Uh, I think the first event they had, they had maybe five vendors, and I think the last one they had like seven or eight vendors. So it's it's growing. It could become a, a nice thing. Uh, you also mentioned about uh, the fire company carnivals. Uh, this has been discussed. Uh, the JCs used to uh, before you came into town. The Elton JCs then turned into the Cecil County JCs. That was their biggest fundraiser of the year. In fact, uh, John was probably participating in many of those JC yes, carnivals. Yes, we did. And uh, the JC carnivals, uh, we always felt, uh, and I participated in many of them, and, and uh, uh, I feel the same way you do. Why aren't we having one? Because uh, I think it brings to a, a, a part of togetherness. Uh, I reached out. Uh, last year to the Elton FOP to see if they wanted to, to uh, have one. Um, I think it would be, I re reached out to the Elton Alliance uh, to host one, and sometimes we got so many things going on, but I think that that's something that maybe uh, I'm gonna put a little more pressure on our Parks and Rec board, but it might be a nice fundraiser for uh, the Parks and Rec Department to uh, help kick off our new community center uh, with some type of carnival in the spring. Uh, your last one was a railroad trip, and I don't know where to go with that one, so I'll, I'll report back to you on that one. So the, uh, uh, that is all that I have as far as what I need to report. Gene? 
Yeah, I, I did want to talk about our um, community guide because there was discussion on whether or not we were going to do a bi yearly or change it. Has there been a decision on that? Or are we just keeping it the way it was? I think the Parks and Rec Board has already sent out a separate Parks and Rec. Is that the printer? It's at the printer. So, okay. So we'll have a yearly, we'll have a yearly uh, community guide uh, as it stands right now, uh, but we will be able to, we could include, we can include a letter. Um, I like, I think we should only have it once a year, to be honest with you, because it just it becomes, you know, kind of redundant that repetitiveness of it. And if you could just do your newsletter for your activities, I think that would be really great. But in the next one, I'm not sure when you're coming out with it. Like, are we going to do it in January or? February. February. So then we could definitely make sure there's some sort that we touch base on a new community center uh, with as much detail as we possibly can give them at that time. Um, I would like to see that. And um, I wanted to congratulate, just say thank you to DPW. I know you've been so busy since that storm has come through. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. It, it's just amazing. And that picture I sent, um, I, as I took a tour, I was seeing more and more residents that really took the time to hopefully make your life better. Um, I wish I could say thank you to all those people. Uh, but, um, it, just, it just made me feel um, very good about how our town residents really care about our town. Uh, to go the extra mile to put those uh, twigs, limbs, brush, whatever it was, out and you know show a lot of respect for our town. And, uh, appreciate that. Yeah, I know. I'm sure you guys do, and I just want to let you know that we all appreciate the work you're, do you're doing from that store. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Charles. Dan, I echo Jean's sentiment about the storm as well, so she's done a good job in uh, referencing that. Uh, Dan, don't forget about the barricades that Wright's Church yeah, in for, okay? And and lastly, uh, I see that uh, the Elk Park to Recreation Advisory Board passed out some information. We just got it. I'll read it later. But there is one significant matter in there that my eyes focus on quickly. That's adult classes, senior classes, and fitness classes. I know right now the health department and the <coughs> Department of Community Services do a lot of these things, and they do a lot of these things in churches that have fellowship hall and, and, and other buildings around Cecil County. They might be a great source to reach out to because it could be something done during the day. There's no cost for that, and it can just alleviate you from doing a lot of things. I know at my church they have a, they just concluded a fitness class and they had people in there from 80 to and it was 55 plus but they had 21 people <coughs> unfortunately us we had space but also it could be an advantage to you as well even the ideas that they present thank you much charles i mean uh, earl charles oh, yeah charles. i don't have anything to report uh, for the parks and rec but i want to thank the parks and rec uh the advisory board jersey and uh Ed Kinders in the back I just want to thank you uh, for all the work you're doing. I uh, want to uh, give a special thanks to the uh, Cecil County Public Schools for the use of their buildings for had some damage done. Uh, I just want to say thank you to them for allowing us to be able to use their facilities uh, at this time. And Mary, thank you for all your help. So thank that's you. it. Thank you. Robert? I don't have anything to report this month, but uh, like everyone else, I, I just continue to be impressed with our public works department, our parks and rec department, our administration. I'm really impressed with this town. And the deeper I get into this, the more impressed I am. And I really wish that everybody knew how hard this core group of people works from this town. Thank you, that's wonderful. <coughs> okay, this is the time of the meeting. We open up the floor. Mr. Gidley, come on down. Okay. Mary has to leave early, so if we could. Um, I didn't know she wanted to speak. Way to 14 North Street.
Mayor, I want to mention that the uh, it was Ray Jackson had a meeting uh, scheduled for the BUD upstairs. Yes. I'm not doing that. Uh, because not upstairs. Yes. What happened here? Yes, yeah, out of service up there for a while. Quite a while. Mr. Gidlin, go ahead. I'd like to uh, say that uh, I'm ready to try to come up with a couple of ideas for every meeting, you know, uh, just to warn you in advance. Doing good. I like your ideas. Thank you. One out of a hundred is good. Thank you, sir. Digest these and uh, get back to you next week with them. Uh, one thing is that uh, five years ago, five years ago, I was at the uh, Rock Hall uh, Pirates and Lunches uh, Fantasy uh, uh, Festival, and it was beautiful. It was wonderful. It's a wonderful uh, town. It's so nice and clean. And um, one thing that stuck my, I was with my uh, niece and nephew at the time, is that they had a, uh, a raffle for a pirate chest full of goodies. I can't remember what they were, mm -hmm. but I, I did, I, uh, Michelle, uh, with one uh, phone call, found out who the contact was, and I sent a letter to them asking how the, con uh, the their raffle was run, and uh, you know what prizes were in the fire uh, chest, and uh, uh, to the best of my memory, the raffle was held every three hours, or it might have been held after so many tickets were sold. I don't know. We'll find out. However, uh, if uh, you know we don't like exactly that. We can come up with our own pirate's chest uh, raffle. Mm -hmm. uh, Amazon has so many different types of uh, uh, pirate's chest in all different sizes. I only have one copy. Mm -hmm. now, yep. We can put uh, different prizes in there, such as uh, uh, $50 off dinner at Minahan's. Fifty off, uh, fifty dollars off of a dinner at the uh, Central Tavern, a hundred dollars off of mixed crab house dinner. It's very expensive. I spent over two hundred dollars last time I was there, and uh, so uh, there's one thing is to have a pirate chest raffle. And my idea is that if it is run every three hours, that that would ge generate more profits than uh, a day long uh, raffle. But uh, we have to see, you know, what Rock Hall comes back with, just mm -hmm. to take a look at it. Second one is lunch with the mayor. You know, this could be, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know how it's going to be run, but it could uh, benefit the uh, little league, little league baseball, high school football, and soccer. And uh, maybe we'll get the mayor fat. There you go. <laughs> For a good cause. Okay, the next thing. Uh, is, uh, don't, first of all, dunk tanks, as you see in a carnival, are, you know, where the clown gets up on a board and try to knock him into a big tank of water. Those cost $4,000 at Walmart <coughs> and uh, two to $300 a day uh, to rent them. You know, that cuts deep into uh, the profit. <coughs> there are alternatives. Okay, I'll give this one because there's comments in the back of my room. I'm going to save that one. It's a, a structure made of PVC pipe. And uh, I knew I made it. No, I knew I made it. No, I 
And uh, I'll say this thing, and the price has changed. It goes from, I don't know, 279 to, two, and right now it's 269. And uh, the uh, bucket holds up to five quarts of water, uh, tap water, and so it's clean. And uh, uh, I envision there be a, a piece of, uh, not chain link fence, but chicken wire that's taped over the front of it just in case a bean bag uh, goes astray. And there's uh, like 112 or something comments uh, on the Amazon you can read. I just want to read one. Let's see. that. Uh, Ordered in place or dunk, uh, dunk tank or squadron picture, <coughs> and I assume that's military, but I don't know if it could be police or fire. Uh, uh, let's see. It arrived fast, easy to put together, and the bucket, the bucket held a lot more water than we thought. Five quarts. Right? Fundraiser was a heat was a hit. Uh, after purchase, still cleared three hundred and fifty dollars. You know, and I'm sure that a town is a lot larger than a squadron. Uh, and what I'm thinking is that uh, uh, the mayor may want to volunteer, uh, the town commissioners may want to volunteer, uh, police uh, uh, official officers, and uh, fire officers. Also, police and fire and public works could use this thing for their own functions. Their own functions. I'm sure you have functions, uh, you know, uh, to, to get together in the summer or other times. You know, uh, you know, maybe the police would like to uh, see their chief get a little wet. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it could be other people. It could be, uh, uh, I think, I think you know, we get uh, Kuntz, the uh, county commissioner. Maybe the county uh, executive would want to uh, stand up there. Now, what I did is that uh, I talked to Michelle about that, and she says, you got to see the Elkton Lines. And I guess on August 13th, I went down to see Jessica Price, but she wasn't there. I talked to her associate and just said, saying, that night we were having a meeting. Now, Bob Massimiano, uh, you're on that committee? Uh, no, I used uh, to be. Uh, no, oh, okay. <coughs> but they, they, they did have a meeting that night, and I don't know what the outcome was. Uh, but I'm thinking for $269, I think it would be a, a very, very wise purchase uh, to have. And could generate a lot of, generate a lot of funds uh, this year and in future years. Uh, Rafting down the Big Elk. <laughs> uh, about uh, two weeks ago, uh, I walked from the dock at Marina Park up to the carousel, uh, you know, by the last baseball field, uh, you know, right, right on Howard uh, Street there. And from uh, the Bridge Street Bridge down, uh, it's all mud, nothing sticks, everything flows right down there. And incidentally, it was still air, and I saw little leaves floating up, up upstream. So it has to be tidal. So if we ever did have a rafting thing, <laughs> gotta make sure that the, the water's flowing in the right direction. And uh, what I was thinking about that is that uh, uh, the rubber rafts could, uh, could be uh, launched you know, from, from the carousel point. And people, you know, this would attract a lot of people. It could become, uh, it might even become somewhat of a local uh, tourist attraction. Now, I'm thinking that there are a lot of rafting companies in North Maryland and Pennsylvania, and one of them could
could come down with all the rats and with the trucks to bring them back. And uh, I'm thinking that if we needed lifeguards, say every 100 yards or so, 150 yards, uh, maybe in canoes, uh, that we could get high school students uh, to get their lifeguard uh, uh, qualifications uh, from the YMCA. And uh, they would help give them a job during the summer too. So it's something you know, to think about maybe in the future. That, Thank uh, you. Uh, above the Bridge Street Bridge, yes, there are sandbars and there are uh, you know some uh, tree trunks uh, stuck in them. Uh, but this this all could be smoothed out, and it's all visible. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one is Pie in the Sky. Is launched these rafts from the Delaware Avenue Bridge. However. There's, there's a, from, from the footbridge down, there's a few hundred yards of wilderness. So uh, I'm not too sure about that one. Uh, the last idea uh, is uh, the treasure hunt, whether at Fall Fest or having it uh, at another time. And uh, I looked it up in Wikipedia, and I must be an old an old uh, reference, because it said, oh, you could look for an eight-track uh, tape. <laughs> to get. So those are my ideas uh, for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gillen. Ed, did you have something to say? Yeah, Mary has to leave at a quarter of eight, so we can come up. Yeah, I, I, come on down. I, I didn't have you on, uh, yeah, come on down. Just to uh, report again on Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, you have, we met and you have a copy of the minutes. Uh, Gene, to answer your question, this is the new flyer. Yes. Oh. Independent flyer that will be going out. Uh, back to the 5K. They're going to tweak a little bit of the course, but we're, the Parks and Recreation Department's requesting additional funds. The uh, coach down at the Bow Manor Athletic Director is going, going to try to make a layout of the course, and if we could have it designed that we could put a sign out at the out at Meadow Park at the uh, starting line and finish line, so people when they come out there they can they can view the actual layout of the course. So we're requesting some additional funds for that. Uh, also, if any of you have any ideas as far as vendors. We thought that uh, if we could try to generate some revenue, have a vendor out of the day at the county meet, because they run four races. They run a JV girls and, and boys, and then also a varsity girls and boys. So it'd be four individual races that day of the event. So hoping we can get a vendor that we get a certain percentage of the, of the tape, which can fund the revert back to the Parks and Recreation Department. One of the emphasis of, of our meeting was how can we advertise and get word out to the new community Pro center. Promote the yes. Parks and Recreation Department. We came up with this idea. Right. What it would be, do you have ideas for new and upcoming activities for sports leagues? Are you interested in being an instructor? Are you looking for part-time work and a contact person for the department? We're hoping we can get permission from the local or Trumo North of Roman to be placed, placed in the employees' luncheon area. Special events, everything that people know exactly what, what the building out. looks like, what it's all about inside. you got to put this out to the public because people need to know what you're doing. Otherwise, it's just a building with a picture. You need to have all this stuff out there letting people know Very good. you're presenting this. So to the public. We need a little help for here. that. As far as the advertising campaign to get the word around. And we feel it's it's very vital that we, we include the county in this mm -hmm. program, this, yes. this whole facility. 
although there are restrictions as far as accommodating certain people, uh, certain age groups and things like that, which we're well aware of, but we also need to generate revenue to keep this place going. So it's and more staffing and everything else. One of your first questions that I think is important are your interest in becoming a certified instructor. That's good because you're going to need a, a multitude of different people. But have you all also, if I answer the question, say to me what I need to be uh, or what criteria I have to have to be certified? Or you haven't gone that far yet? Well, the bottom line right now, we're just trying to figure out because of the fact that of the staffing, we cannot program as me as a program and been in recreation for so long, I cannot program a building and help anybody out if I don't know the amount of staff that you're going to have in this building. I didn't say that. I, but I, I'm I, just I, letting you know. Okay, I'm, I if, if, I, if I were to come to you and say that I want to instruct volleyball, is that a given or are okay. those criteria for me? in order to be on your staff. That's all I'm asking. We, 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 have, say we, have, we, we have contacts. I have Absolutely. potential contacts of, we, yes. of people who coach in college. Yes. Who are retired to be more more happy to run leagues. Through the University of Delaware so. too, yes. There's a lot of contacts that we can fill this building up. I it's think, just the idea. I, I appreciate what you're saying, but what I'm saying, the staff that you allow to come, even though you have contacts, are those people going to be permitted to do so and to keep us safe as a as as the town of Dalton. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yes, because so, of what's all because everybody there. just can't go out there as what I'm saying. Follow me through. I appreciate what you're saying. I just can't go out there and instruct children. Right. Truly understand that. Truly understand that. Um okay, for one we're looking at insurance. If people are coming from you call this a neighborhood community center and people coming from everywhere. Are we insured so when people walk through this door and something happens to them, are they covered? Is that we need to yes, we need to have like insurance? We're, we're insured by the local government insurance trust. Excellent. They, they will insure us for liability as well as the property loss and everything. We're fully covered as a government. Perfect. Okay. Well, that's that's one thing that was a big thing on my mind. So people walking through that door from all over. Now, if this is a neighborhood community center, are you thinking about people coming from the Northeast or people coming from other places that are going to be walking through our doors? Or is it just going to be local Elkton community? It could be anybody. Well, I'm just simply saying, exactly. if my child is out there participating, I'm going to be sure that I have somebody that's certified and know what they're doing for the that's Well, all there you go. And that the, that's the truth because they got to get certified with blood pathogens, CPR, first aid. You need to have everything. When they walk through that door, you know your child's going to be safe as soon as they walk through that door. What's the question I'm asking? I understand what you're saying. Absolutely. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Absolutely. You're not going to put a program, you're not going to schedule a program unless you have a certified instructor. You better believe yes. that. Yes. But that will all be done up front. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so what did, would you need from us to make that happen? Any, okay. any suggestions for people that you would know? In, in, in order for us to advertise these programs, right. we need to have a certified instructor in place before we can advertise it. Yes. And that's yes, that's what we are working right. along with Mary, helping Mary out with that and making suggestions. And there again, if any of you know anyone that's certified, that could teach arts classes, karate classes, things like that. Give us the names, and and we will we will pursue uh, contacting them and, and see what if they're if they're interested. So, and we have a wealth of knowledge and information of, of, of people from Cecil College, University of Delaware, all over. So, so all you over. probably already have a good bank of instructors in the back of your mind or lined yes. up. Or oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right, so it's not just the five of us giving no, 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 no. people. No, no, okay. And do you have a list of activities that you plan? You can have a lot of activities that you plan, but if you don't have the staffing in the building. Have you compiled a list, I mean? Well, well, well that, that, will be, that will be part of the, the January, February bulletin going out, because that's, that's mm -hmm. when we're going to have to hit the ground running. And I would think too on some of these activities, if there's a fee to participate in them, 
that fee would help us designate the help you need. If Correct. you're saying this 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 program is going to generate five hundred dollars or whatever, we're able to put that towards paying. Correct. The staff that you need, other than volunteer that, staff. That, that's that's where we want to get instructors who are certified. But they also go out and they recruit people in their Them, classes. In their the more classes. people they recruit, the more money they're going to make. Right. So. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? So. Is it that you need to know that we're open and flexible for this? Is that all you're looking for right now? Or yeah, we're something we're more specific? For anything, any we're suggestion. looking for any suggestions that you can let us know that in order to go forward, we have to know that you're backing this up. That if we can put it out there, as you can see, Putting something like this and people know this is what we're doing, this is the loop, this is what we're offering. Right. We need to know are you going to have ID cards? Are you going to somehow maybe spend ten dollars for a fee that people are walking into the building that you're not pe people just coming out of the streets and just coming into the building? We have to make sure that people are walking in there having we can account for their, their, you know, how they our, our diet, our diet idea is that we have like a, a karate class. Every one of the participants will be given a key or a card if they check Something. in. You just can't walk in without registering or checking in. So it's, it's not going to be an open door policy. It's going to be controlled as far as registration. It has to be controlled. So. It has to be. You just can't have people walking out. Well, I, I love your suggestions. I think it, when we, as we start moving with these programs, we're going to follow those suggestions for yeah. programming. I don't think that anyone and, up yeah. here is going to be bad at well, this. Well, we're just trying to say that in order for us to be successful and help marry out the program, this building, and be successful, we need help yeah. from everybody to understand this is going to be, you just don't open the doors and walk in. You have to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row. And, um, and I from, think this is the level yeah, we want to go to. From the security to everything, from the inside, people um, certified, making sure if somebody drops in the gym, do you know what to do? When somebody, a bloody nose, you're going to have to make sure you've got a bio bag and stuff, all this stuff. you got to have all this stuff in mind because you can't open yourself up to a lawsuit. You've got to make sure you have everything, you know, Right. And Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've got to have security. You've got to make sure that everything is up for it. Because if you're putting this much money into something this beautiful, you've got to have to make sure it's going to run like clockwork as soon as you open those doors. And that's my job. That's his job to make right. sure that we're giving you our expertise of what goes into a building to make it successful. And what we're asking for is, is your help. Not, not, not an a la carte uh, yeah. uh, open open checkbook, but as, as things go along, we're going to have to spend some money to get the word out on this. Get the and, word and out. Mary's going to need financial backing in order to do it. So we can get the new one. Yeah, If that makes sense. Well, yeah, I don't personally, and we're not going to put the time and money into this building and not support this, what's needed to make it. Sure. serviceable to the community so. because our number one is safety and i told you that once before i said it number one is safety as soon as you walk through those doors you know it's all secure and safety right. that's the bottom line and, and i personally think as you as you as all this comes together and you start giving us a, a, a more firm idea of what programs you want to start with because i don't you might want to do 50 programs but i'm sure you're not going to start with 50 no, absolutely but not. But you're going to start with a basic amount Correct. that you know is going to uh, be utilized and appreciated to start. Yes. And so from that, we should be able to determine the personnel that we either need to hire or get lined up as volunteers and what it's going to cost so that we can budget for it and or Mary can put it in that February brochure. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, if you want input and you go out into the public in this manner, then if you could at least maybe say 
uh, your your input is is requested, appreciated. Absolutely. Please respond by correct November thirtieth. The public oh, needs to know what they want in that building. Well, yeah, I mean, give them get it out there, give get them time to there. respond. But it's, you, you got know, a beautiful building and you got a nice setting. Yeah. You need to let people know this is what's coming, and you need to put it out. Special events, you need. Uh, a fall fest, all the stuff that you're doing from now to this. That's a good to idea. To let too. people know that this is in there going, wow, we got this brand new rec center coming online. And, you know, and advertising it so people know what what's coming. We got the ideas and, you know, you, we're, I'm just trying to make it a lot easier to, if you're gonna promote something, let people know what the inside of the building looks like, what we're doing with it. We've got a gymnasium or activity rooms. We've got this, that, 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 and that. So. Thank you for your time. Thank you. But thank, thank you. you very much. That's all we can talk. Well, listen, I, I appreciate everything that you guys are doing. And we're, you want this? I like the direction we're going. Oh, I have this one. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Um, appreciate you uh, well, helping to make this community center better. It's all about success, and success comes with making sure that the public knows exactly what's happening. Otherwise, they're not coming. <laughs> I know you got to go, but I have some thoughts on this. I'd like to talk to you about this sometime, Marianne. I'd like to talk to the board. Well, you can call me too. I know my name's Marianne, but please don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Chuck, did you say you wanted to say something? I'll leave it there. Perfect. My name's Charles Blankenship, everybody calls me Chuck, uh, 135 Westley Street here in town. I actually have two things, Robbie, that uh, something was just brought to my attention. Uh, one is personal, one is uh, for an organization that I'm with. The personal one is, uh, I've been in here talking about the, as you said, easement. Uh, it is a is where sanitary sewer runs, but anyway, it's an alleyway, a, a recognized alleyway that used to run from behind Four Corners to Maryland Avenue, but when it got so wet, they ended up putting a culvert there and blocked it out. Uh, about three years ago, the town came in, dug out the topsoil, took a, took a uh, sanitary sewer manhole cover, took it down to ground level and everything, brought crush and run in. That's the access to the back of my property. And uh, the problem of it is that as with any right of way in a town, uh, it should remain unblocked. And the two property owners on Wesley Street um, that are on either side of the alley uh, continue to park next to their houses in the alleyway and uh, twice now I've tried to either get in or get out from the back side of my property with my, one of my trailers. Uh, they had a car parked there, weren't home, the other property owner had their truck parked there. Uh, and wouldn't answer the door, so I couldn't I couldn't use the alleyway when I needed to use the alleyway. Basically, what I'm asking is: Is there any way to um, display that that is a public right of way, and um, so that it can remain unblocked? And if it doesn't remain unblocked, then I can call. EPD and ask them to do something about getting them to move the vehicles. 
uh, when Mr. Desbedo uh, rebuilt uh, property uh, that had burned down, he paved half his half of the alleyway to make off street parking, and that's where that's where they park. But uh, it's halfway across the alleyway. When your grandma, my mother, huh? right uh lived there she they always parked in the back behind the house out of the alleyway i used that for the first five or six years i was there to get good in the back of my property people that uh, ended up buying it uh from rosemary and ed right then did Who's rosemary and ed? uh dean ed what? Oh, 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 Mary I'm Anne. sorry. You're talking about, okay, I knew you're talking about. Go right, ahead, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, when, when, uh, when they sold that, they sold it to a young lady. There was a bunch of problems down on the corner. She had a young son. Uh, so she ended up selling it again. And the people that are there have given Elton PD plenty of business. Uh, and they don't want to hear that that's not their parking place. And like I said, I tried to get down through there. They were parked there. They wouldn't even come to the door. You know? um, so if there's some way that we can mark that, that it's a public access that, that needs to remain open, I would appreciate it. Uh, second of all, part of the damage from the storm on Sunday, and I have plenty of pictures. Uh, Rob has seen it personally. I, I showed the pictures to uh, uh, Robbie, a lot of damage out behind my house. The last time it happened, I spent the time hauling everything out to Western Street. It took me four days to clean up. The damage that's out there now is probably three to four times as much as what happened in a storm about five weeks ago. Uh, also, the culvert that was put in under uh, Mayor Krause's uh, administration, one of the trees that got knocked over in the storm on Sunday has come down and completely blocked the culvert. Uh, it could cause any water that does come down through there, if we were to get another good rainstorm, uh, could cause it to back up and not be able to go through the culvert. So, uh, talking with Dan and everything, would like uh, Public Works to come back here and take care of that tree. The top came out of a couple of trees that are in the right of way. Uh, so, instead of me cutting them up and dragging them out to Wesley Street, if uh, Public Works, say, if they get the roof fixed, uh, could come back here with a chipper or whatever take care of what come out of their trees and at the same time chew up what I could lay out there. Uh, that would be a lot less work for me. So you can handle that. Yeah, that's, that, uh, that's what I'm asking. Okay. So those two things, if, if the town can start coming back in there just every once in a while and, you know, I see, I see, uh, the guys on the street all the time and everything and I've asked them to come back there and maybe when they're out spraying spray the weeds down uh, or, or, or whatever because I don't run it every day you know so I'm not keeping the weeds down by running it uh, but it is the only way that I can get to the back of my property so that's what I'm asking thank you for that Second of all, uh, I am three times past master of Union Lodge number 48, uh, the Masonic Lodge here in town. We have had some interest in placing signs coming into town. I know you've all seen them riding up through Pennsylvania or whatever you see that, that there are signs displayed that show that there is a Masonic Lodge in town and when it meets and everything. 
they're looking to maybe place some of these signs on the entrances into town. When I say that, I'm talking 213 north and south, 279 from Newark to Route 40 coming into town, and Route 40 east and west. So it would be a total of like six signs that we would like to place if we can, uh, you know, advertising the fact that we're here. Uh, I, I think we'd have to coordinate that through uh, through Lewis to make sure that we're right how we can do that. But uh, it's state they're highway state regulated signs. They're all state. What's that? They're all state, state highway, highway regulated signs on all those roads. They're not town roads. Okay. So they would all three. Yeah, all three of those. I would guess they would be. Uh, hmm. Now we do have a uh, well screen. We have a screen down at the, at, at the park. At the park. park that, we, we can start there. <laughs> if, start if you here. have a nice sign, we'll we'll take a look at it and see if we can prove it. And, yeah. And uh, uh, we we can get a couple made up. That's that's no problem. Uh, and I th just to let you know that I talked to uh, a guy maybe 20 years ago on the same from from the state road uh, about that, and apparently he didn't have a very above board uh, opinion of our organization. So he just said that now we've got too many signs out there now, we're not putting any more signs up. So, uh, but on behalf of uh, Master of the Lodge uh, this year, uh, I'd like to let you know that if there's anything ever, ever that our lodge can do with any of the town functions or anything like that, that we'd love to participate in, and help out in any way we can. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks. So what lodge are you again? Excuse me? What lodge are you again? Union 48 right here on the corner of uh, the side. Yeah. Okay. I know that we had uh, KCI back here doing some surveying, I think a couple years ago on that alleyway. There should be a way that we could determine and mark it in some fashion, even if it's with uh, uh, kind of the same delineators that we have out here on the turn. Maybe we can put some delineators so people can see that it's a, uh, a right of way through there. So we'll be able to come up with something. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else this evening? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned.